guys, it's Kaylee, and welcome back to Hippie in a Suit, where every week I talk about sustainability because I dream of a world where people on Facebook recognize that they are not, in fact, medical doctors and stop giving their opinions on complex medical issues. So first of all, I just wanted to say sorry if the lighting in this video is a little strange. Uh, and maybe if you hear some background noise, I literally just got everything set up and then this crazy summer thunderstorm hit, so that's fun. Also, we're in the middle of a heat wave and it's a million degrees, so apologies for not doing my hair, not wearing makeup, and probably sweating profusely. That's probably what we're gonna be like for the next couple months, so apologies for that. This is another video in my SDG series where I explain each of the 17 sustainable development goals. If you haven't already watched my primer on the SDGs, I really recommend checking that out first so you can understand the overall context and framework and what it's trying to achieve. Today we are zooming in on SDG 3, which is focused on good health and well-being, and it could not be a more appropriate moment to talk about this goal because I am getting my second dose of the COVID vaccine tomorrow, so that's kind of exciting. Now, I have to admit, that this video has really been like my Everest. It took me ages to research and write because this goal is just so massive. It has a whopping 13 targets and many of them are made up of multiple dimensions that are entire fields of work in and of themselves. And then I filmed the entire video, edited it for like three hours, and during that process I decided I needed to refilm the entire thing. Now, why did I feel that I needed to redo the entire video? Well, as I mentioned, this goal is the health goal, and a lot of the statistics I'm going to share today are about disease and death. And when I filmed it the first time, I didn't feel that I properly conveyed the gravity of these issues. I was so focused on giving accurate information, and I kind of just missed altogether the human dimension of it. It was a really good reminder for me that these SDGs are really life and death to so many people. So whether it be poverty, access to food and water, or of course health and disease and sickness, which is what we're gonna talk about today, it's so easy to get lost in the numbers and statistics, but these are people's lives and that's why achieving this agenda is so, so important. I'm going to be trying really hard to do this topic justice, even though it's not my field of expertise. And there is a lot in here, so maybe grab a tea or a coffee and settle in because it's gonna be a long one. But I just wanted to let you know that's why it's taken so long and that's why I really feel it's important that we talk about this in a more serious manner. As always, I do a blog post that summarizes this topic in writing. And that includes links to my research, articles where you can learn more, and a few organizations who work in this domain in case you want to follow or support their work. And I would also like to give a huge shout out to my colleague Edward, who has worked in the health realm for many, many years and kindly reviewed most of my research that went into making this video to make sure that I was properly characterizing all of these issues and explaining them. So with that, let's dive into SDG3, Good Health and Well-Being. Health featured prominently in the Millennium Development Goals, so it is no wonder that it is the largest goal in the whole 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. It covers a large range of topics related to preventing and treating sickness and prolonging life expectancy. What sets SDG3 drastically apart from its MDG predecessors is the focus on well-being. I think this is best demonstrated with the World Health Organization's definition of health, which is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. You may remember that I characterized the 2030 Agenda as an integrated and interlinked framework, and health is a great example of the interlinkages with many other SDGs. A healthy population is absolutely crucial to SDG 8, economic prosperity. After all, you cannot generate wealth without workers and consumers who aren't sick or worrying about their medical bills. SDG 10, inequality, has been directly linked to poor health and access to health services. 
In addition, a degraded environment is a huge contributor to health issues. And for example, lacking access to clean water and sanitation causes many health issues and makes treating them more and more difficult. Air pollution causes a range of respiratory problems and interactions with wildlife can lead to the spread of zoonotic diseases and in some case even cause pandemics, <laughs> COVID. So let's take a closer look at each of the targets in this goal. As is the case in all my SDG videos, I'll start by explaining what the target is and then I'll go into where we currently stand as a global community on achieving it. Target 3.1. By 2030, reduce the global maternal mortality ratio to less than 70 per 100,000 live births. The maternal mortality ratio refers to the number of women who die from pregnancy-related causes while pregnant or within 42 days of pregnancy termination per 100,000 live births. What's notable about this target is its prevalence in developing countries compared to that in developed countries. In fact, 94% of all maternal deaths occur in low and lower middle income countries. Maternal mortality is extremely preventable, but it is directly linked to health infrastructure and outcome. The United Nations Development Program outlines the determinants of maternal mortality in several major categories. These include individual attributes of women, such as age, knowledge of services, and previous medical history, family characteristics such as economic status, access to resources, support from family, and the marital relationship, community context, whether it be rural, urban, or tribal. This also includes social position from class, caste, ethnicity, social capital, and physical distance to facilities, cultural and social values such as women's status in a particular societal setting, gender norms, religion, health beliefs, and social cohesion. Health services, including availability of services, skilled staff, acceptability of services, and fees for those services. And finally, structural determinants such as laws, policies, budgets, education, and social protection. Good progress has been made on fighting maternal mortality, but of course, it still affects far too many women. Between 2000 and 2017, the maternal mortality ratio dropped by 38% worldwide from 342 deaths to 211 deaths per 100,000 live births worldwide. However, 810 women still die every day from pregnancy or childbirth. Over 40% of all countries have fewer than 10 medical doctors per 10,000 people, and over 55% of countries have fewer than 40 nursing and midwifery personnel per 10,000 people. Target 2.3. By 2030, end preventable deaths of newborns and children under five years of age, with all countries aiming to reduce neonatal mortality to at least as low as 12 per 1,000 live births and under five mortality to at least as low as 25 per 1,000 live births. Similar to the first target, child mortality is mostly preventable and occurs disproportionately in poor countries. Four out of every five deaths of children under the age of five happen in Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Asia. Children in Sub-Saharan Africa are 15 times more likely to die before the age of five than children in high income countries. The WHO explains that the leading causes of death in children under the age of five are preterm birth complications, birth asphyxia or trauma, pneumonia, congenital anomalies, diarrhea, and malaria, all of which can be prevented or treated with access to simple, affordable interventions, including immunization, adequate nutrition, safe water and food, and quality care by a trained health provider when needed. Nutrition-related factors contribute to about 45% of deaths in children under the age of five, as malnourished children have a higher risk of death from common childhood illness, such as diarrhea, pneumonia, and malaria. In 2019, an estimated 5.2 million children under the age of five died mostly from preventable causes, with almost half of these being within their first month of life. As tragic as that is, it does represent significant progress, a decline from 12.6 million in 1990 to just 5.2 million in 2019. 
This is the equivalent of one in 11 children dying before reaching the age of five in 1990, compared to one in 27 in 2019. Target 3.3. By 2030, end the epidemics of AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, neglected tropical diseases, and combat hepatitis, waterborne diseases, and other communicable diseases. Communicable diseases are illnesses caused by an infectious agent or its toxins that occur through the direct or indirect transmission of the infectious agent or its products from an infected individual or via an animal vector or the inanimate environment to a susceptible animal or host. <laughs> wow, such a big mouthful, but if I want to put that really simply, it basically means these are diseases that you can catch from others or from your environment. Thus the term communicable. I'm going to quickly define each of the four big communicable diseases in case you aren't familiar with them. The first is AIDS, and it is a disease caused by untreated HIV or human immunodeficiency virus. HIV is a virus that attacks cells that help the body fight infection, making a person more vulnerable to other infections or diseases. Tuberculosis is an infectious disease usually caused by a bacteria. Tuberculosis generally affects the lungs, but can also affect other parts of the body. Malaria is an intermittent and remittent fever caused by a protozoan parasite which invades the red blood cells and is transmitted by mosquitoes in many tropical and subtropical regions. Neglected tropical diseases are a group of bacterial, parasitic, viral, and fungal infections that are prevalent in many tropical and subtropical developing countries where poverty is rampant. Ending the epidemics of these diseases is threefold. First, preventing incidences, second, decreasing deaths, and third, and eventually decreasing their prevalence in the population. Think about it this way. When a disease exists in a population, there are several priorities at the same time. You want to prevent others from catching it so that it doesn't spread, and this is what we refer to as the incidence dimension. You also want to treat those who have it so that they do not die. This is reducing mortality or death rates. And then over time, you want to decrease the prevalence of the disease overall in the population, the prevalence dimension. It seems pretty straightforward, but the balance between these factors can actually be pretty complex. If we take HIV for an example, the epidemic started in the 80s and it grew rapidly until its peak in about 2005. Between 1990 and 2005, incidence, prevalence, and death rates were all increasing. But in 2005, the death rate and incident rate began to sharply decline. However, prevalence continued to grow because more people were able to live with HIV for longer periods of time, thanks to huge developments in treatment through antiretroviral therapy. In 1990, an estimated 9 million people were living with HIV, but in 2019, 38 million people were. So if someone just looked at only that prevalence dimension, you may think this is a bad thing. Like so many more people have HIV, but when you take it in a full picture with the death rates and incident rates decreasing, we see it's actually very promising progress. The rate is higher because more people are able to live with it. Incidence, mortality rate, and prevalence look very different for each of these diseases and the interventions vary greatly as well. Tuberculosis can be vaccinated against for prevention, but only through global vaccine rollout, especially in poor countries that often can't afford it. For malaria, there are a range of prevention methods from cheap mosquito nets for beds to anti-malaria pills to mosquito control and even some promising vaccines for children. Treating all of these diseases is possible, but only with access to strong healthcare systems, which many do not have in the areas where these diseases are the most prevalent. Preventing and treating HIV has an added layer of complexity because of the harmful social stigma around that particular disease. HIV is passed primarily through unprotected sex and drug use and often disproportionately affects marginalized communities like sex workers, people who inject drugs, and the LGBTQ community. To see where we stand on this target, let's look at each of these major diseases. According to UNAIDS, 26 million people were accessing antiretroviral therapy as of the end of June 2020. 
38 million people globally were living with HIV in 2019, as I've already mentioned, and 1.7 million new people became infected with HIV in 2019. Sadly, 690,000 people died from AIDS-related illnesses in 2019, but this does represent market progress as at the peak of the epidemic in 2004 and 2005, 2 million people died from AIDS. And that number has since been reduced by about 60% to those numbers that we see now. AIDS is the leading cause of death of women reproductive age worldwide, and it is now the leading cause of death of adolescents aged 10 to 19 in Africa. It is also the second most common cause of death among adolescents globally. A total of 1.4 million people died from tuberculosis in 2019, including 208,000 people with HIV. While tuberculosis occurs in every country and age group, 30 high TB burden countries accounted for 87% of new cases. TB incidence is falling about 2% per year, and between 2015 and 2019, the cumulative reduction was 9%. In 2019, an estimated 229 million clinical episodes of malaria happened, and 409,000 deaths were recorded. 94% of deaths in 2019 because of malaria were in the African region. The global malaria incident rate has fallen by an estimated 37%, and mortality rates by 58% since 2000. In 2019, 1.74 billion, billion with a B, were reported to require mass or individual treatment to care for neglected tropical diseases. This is down from 2.19 billion in 2010 and about 12 million fewer than was reported in 2018. Target 3.4. By 2030, reduce by one-third premature mortality from non-communicable diseases through prevention and treatment and promote mental health and well-being. Non-communicable diseases, also known as chronic diseases, tend to be of a long duration and are the result of a combination of genetic, physiological, environmental, and behavioral factors. NCDs are not transmitted person to person and most are preventable. The leading factors contributing to NCDs are tobacco use, unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, and harmful use of alcohol. The main types of NCDs are cardiovascular diseases such as heart attacks and stroke, cancers, chronic respiratory diseases such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and asthma, diabetes, and suicide. NCDs are the number one cause of death and disability worldwide, accounting for 70% of all deaths. NCDs disproportionately affect people in low and middle income countries where more than three quarters of global NCD deaths occur. To treat NCDs, it is crucial to prevent them, screen and identify them, and provide appropriate care. Over 41 million people per year are killed by NCDs. To break this down further, let's look at some of the leading causes within that huge 41 million number. And this really is one of those times in this video when I think the statistics can just become a little too overwhelming and make us a little numb to the fact that this is really affecting real people. So just keep that in mind as I go through these numbers. Cardiovascular diseases account for most NCD deaths or about 17.9 million people. Cancers, 9.3 million respiratory disease, 4.1 million, tobacco, 7.2 million, diabetes, 1.5 million, excess salt and sodium intake, 4.1 million, alcohol, 3.3 million, insufficient physical activity, 1.6 million, and suicide, 800,000. There are no general upward or downward trends for NCDs. Some are increasing and some are decreasing. So it's a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to our performance on tackling NCDs. Target 3.5, strengthen the prevention and treatment of substance abuse, including narcotic drug abuse and harmful use of alcohol. Substance abuse refers to excessive use of drug or alcohol in a way that is detrimental to the self, society, or both. This definition includes both physical and psychological dependence. While this target seems relatively straightforward, it's actually quite complex from a policy angle because of the intersection with the criminal justice system. It is notable that substance abuse is seen as a health issue in the 2030 agenda because in many countries it is treated more as a criminal issue 
despite all the evidence pointing to the fact that addressing it is best done in the health system. Prevention is understood as any activity designed to avoid substance abuse and reduce its health and social consequences. This broad term can include actions aimed at reducing supply based on the belief that decreased availability of substances reduces the opportunities for abuse and dependence and decreasing demand, including education, health promotion, disease prevention, and tackling environmental factors that may contribute to substance abuse. Effective treatment of substance abuse issues looks at a complex web of psychosocial, environmental, and biological factors that play into addiction. 269 million people used drugs worldwide in 2018, which is 30% more than 2009. 35 million people are estimated to be suffering from a drug abuse disorder. Cannabis is the most used substance worldwide with an estimated 192 million people using it. Opioids, however, remain the most harmful as over the past decade, the total number of deaths due to opioid use disorders went up by 71%. Drug use has increased far more rapidly among developing countries over the period of 2000 to 2018 than it has in developed countries. Globally, alcohol consumption causes 2.8 million premature deaths per year, and the total volume of alcohol consumed per year has increased by as much as 70% between 1990 and 2017. Target 3.6. By 2020, have the number of global deaths and injuries from road traffic accidents. While one might think of road traffic accidents as accidents between cars, it actually includes all incidents that happen on the road, including those that involve vulnerable road users like pedestrians, cyclists, and motorcyclists. In fact, more than half of all road traffic deaths are attributed to these more vulnerable road user groups. While we are looking at the health aspect of road traffic accidents, they also have a huge, huge economic cost. It is estimated that road traffic accidents cost countries 3% of their gross domestic product per year. Preventing road traffic accidents involves tackling various risk factors, including speeding, driving under the influence of alcohol and other psychoactive substances, non-use of motorcycle helmets, seatbelts, and child restraints, distracted driving due to mobile phones, unsafe road infrastructure or vehicles, inadequate post-crash care, and inadequate law enforcement of traffic laws. Approximately 1.35 million people die each year as a result of road traffic accidents, and this figure has remained relatively stable since 1990. Road traffic injuries are the leading cause of death for children and young adults aged 5 to 29 years old. 93% of the world's fatalities on the road occur in low and middle income countries, even though these countries have only 60% of the world's vehicles. Men, and particularly young men, are the most likely to die in road traffic accidents. 73% of all road traffic deaths occur among young males under the age of 25. Men are almost three times more likely to be killed in a road traffic crash than young women are. Target 3.7. By 2030, ensure universal access to sexual and reproductive health care services, including for family planning, information and education, and the integration of reproductive health into national strategies and programs. Sexual reproductive health care services address reproductive processes, functions, and systems at all stages of life. And they include both physical and psychological well-being when it comes to sexuality. This SDG target is measured by two indicators, one focused on meeting family planning needs and the other on adolescent birth rates or the number of women between the ages of 10 and 19 who are having babies. But of course, when we unpack what it takes to address these indicators, there are a host of important issues that need to be addressed. These include information on and access to modern contraception, emergency contraception, and menstruation products. HIV and sexually transmitted infection testing and treatment, gynecology, pregnancy testing and services, and safe abortion, and counseling included that which is specifically related to gender-based violence, sexual assault, and other harmful practices. 
As of 2020, only 55% of married or in union women aged 15 to 49 make their own decisions regarding sexual and reproductive health rights based on data from 57 countries. There are vast differences in these numbers depending on the region. For example, this number is less than 40% in Middle Africa and Western Africa, but it is nearly 80% in some countries in Europe, Southeastern Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean. Approximately 12 million girls aged 15 to 19 years and at least 770,000 girls under the age of 15 give birth each year, mostly in developing countries. Of the estimated 5.6 million abortions that occur each year among adolescent girls aged 15 to 19, 3.9 million are unsafe, contributing to maternal mortality, morbidity, and lasting health problems. Target 3.8, achieve universal health coverage, including financial risk protection, access to quality essential healthcare services, and access to safe, effective, quality, and affordable essential medicines and vaccines for all. The key to universal health coverage is that individuals can receive the health services they need without suffering any financial hardship. So it's both about the services available and the cost of those services. Essential health services include health promotion and prevention, treatment, rehabilitation, and palliative care over the lifespan of an individual. This target is measured by two indicators, the proportion of the population that can access essential quality health services and the proportion of the population that spends a large amount of their household income on health. The WHO uses 16 essential health services in four categories as indicators of the level and equity of coverage in individual countries. The four big categories are reproductive, maternal, newborn, and child health, including family planning, delivery care, and child immunization, infectious disease prevention and treatment, non-communicable disease prevention and treatment, and service capacity, including hospital access, healthcare worker density, and access to essential medicines. Half of the world's population does not have access to the healthcare they need. About 930 million people worldwide spend at least 10% of their total income on health services. 100 million people each year fall into poverty because of out-of-pocket health spending. Target 3.9. By 2030, substantially reduce the number of deaths and illnesses from hazardous chemicals and air, water, and soil pollution and contamination. This target includes three major components. Air pollution, which includes outdoor ozone pollution, outdoor particulate pollution, and household pollution from smoking or cooking with solid fuels indoors clean water, sanitation, and hygiene, and specifically the fact that not having access to these services can lead to preventable diseases such as diarrhea, cholera, and worms. And thirdly, poisoning, including from household chemicals, chemicals used in products or our environment, and even snake bites. All of these forms of pollution and poisoning are measured by the number of deaths attributed to each cause per 100,000 individuals. I'll go over each of the big categories I just mentioned to explain where we currently stand on this target. So first for air pollution, in 2016, 91% of the world's population was living in a place where WHO air quality guidelines were not met. Outdoor air pollution in both cities and rural areas was estimated to cause 4.2 million premature deaths worldwide in 2016. These rates have remained quite steady over the last decade. Indoor air pollution is very problematic in developing countries. Around 3 billion people cook using polluting open fires or simple stoves fueled by kerosene, biomass, and coal. Each year, close to 4 million people die prematurely from illness attributable to household air pollution. In addition, nearly half of the deaths due to pneumonia among children under the age of five are caused by particular matter, or soot, inhaled from household air pollution. The good news is that the indoor air pollution dimension is dropping at a much more steep rate than outdoor air pollution. For clean water, sanitation, and hygiene, as of 2017, 829,000 people die each year from diarrhea as a result of unsafe drinking water, sanitation, and hygiene. 785 million people lack access to basic drinking water, and 884 million people do not have safe water to drink. 
However, this does represent some progress as this number was well over a billion as recently as 10 years ago. 2 billion people still do not have access to basic sanitation facilities such as toilets or latrines. In least developed countries, 22% of healthcare facilities have no water service, 21% have no sanitation service, and 22% have no waste management service. For poisoning, according to WHO data, in 2012, an estimated 193,000 people died worldwide from unintentional poisoning. Of these deaths, 84% occurred in low and middle income countries. <sighs> okay, <laughs> who is still with me? This, like I said, this goal is just so huge. I hope I haven't overwhelmed anyone with all these numbers and information. This is one of those videos where following along with the blog post may help. I'm trying to put as many of the numbers in infographic kind of things so you can follow, but it's just a lot. So let's round this out with the means of implementation where I'll just read them and I won't really go into depth just to save everyone's sanity. So the means of implementation for SDG3 are target 3.A, strengthen the implementation of the World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control in all countries as appropriate. Target 3B, Support the research and development of vaccines and medicines for the communicable and non-communicable diseases that primarily affect developing countries. Provide access to affordable essential medicines and vaccines in accordance with the Doha Declaration of the TRIPS Agreement and Public Health, which affirms the rights of developing countries to use to the full provisions in the agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property rights regarding flexibilities to protect public health and in particular provide ex access to medicines for all. That's like such a long way of saying under world trade uh, law and negotiations to allow particularly developing countries access to the medicines that they need at uh, fair intellectual property rates or waiving intellectual property rates so that they can afford them. Target 3C substantially increase health financing and the recruitment, development, training, and retention of the health workforce in developing countries, especially in least developed countries and small island developing states. And target 3D, strengthen the capacity of all countries, in particular developing countries, for early warning risk reduction and management of national and global health risks. As I mentioned, I'm not gonna go into depth with all of these, but you will notice that two issues within the means of implementation, target 3B and 3D, really are very prevalent in the news and our lives right now because of the pandemic. 3B focuses on medicines for all, and with the surge of COVID cases in developing countries like India, this has become an extremely hot button issue. You will have heard that just about a month ago, President Biden recently spoke in favor of waiving intellectual property protection for COVID vaccines, which is like a huge deal in the trade world because it's very rare for countries to come out in favor of waiving intellectual property rights. 3D looks at preparedness for health risks. And of course, we know that primarily means pandemics. Despite many very smart people calling attention to pandemic preparedness, it's quite safe to say that the world was caught on its back foot when COVID hit. Anyway, I'm not an expert on health, but I did just want to point those out and bring them to your attention because those are issues that are affecting all of us right now, big time. And with that, let's summarize and close out this video. SDG3 is the largest goal in the whole 2030 agenda and focuses on health and well being. The goal looks at both prevention and treatment of disease, sickness, and health issues. This is best summed up with the WHO's definition of health a state of complete physical, mental, and social well being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This goal is made up of a whopping 13 targets, nine of which are substantive and four of which are means of implementation. Target 3.1 and 3.2 are about reducing mortality of mothers and children. These issues are much more prevalent in developing countries and are mostly preventable. As a global community, we have made progress on each of these massive challenges. 
However, 810 women die every day from pregnancy and childbirth, and 1 in 27 children die under the age of 5. Target 3.3 strives to end the epidemics of AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, and neglected tropical diseases. Ending the epidemics of these diseases is threefold. First, preventing incidences, second, decreasing deaths, and third, decreasing their prevalence in the population overall. Progress has been made on all these diseases, but they still affect millions of people. In 2019, deaths as a result of AIDS were 690,000, 1.4 million from tuberculosis, and 409,000 from malaria. Target 3.4 covers non-communicable diseases which tend to be of long duration and are the result of a combination of genetic, physiological, environmental, and behavioral factors. They are the biggest cause of death globally, causing 41 million deaths annually. To treat NCDs, it is crucial to prevent them, screen them, identify them, and provide appropriate care. Target 3.5 relates to substance abuse. Substance abuse refers to excessive use of a drug or alcohol in a way that is detrimental to the self, society, or both. This definition includes both physical and psychological dependence. Effective treatment of substance abuse issues looks at the complex web of psychosocial, environmental, and biological factors that play into an addiction. 35 million people are estimated to be suffering from a drug abuse disorder, and alcohol consumption causes 2.8 million premature deaths per year. Target 3.6 aims to half the number of global deaths and injuries from road traffic accidents. Currently, 1.35 million people die each year as a result of road traffic accidents. Preventing these deaths means tackling speeding, driving under the influence, non-use of safety equipment and restraints, distracted driving, unsafe road infrastructure or vehicles, inadequate post-crash care, and enforcement of traffic laws. Target 3.7 focuses on sexual and reproductive health care services that address reproductive processes, functions, and systems at all stages of life and include both physical and psychological well-being when it comes to sexuality. This includes information on and access to modern contraception, emergency contraception, menstruation products, HIV and sexually transmitted infection testing and treatment, gynecology, pregnancy testing and services, safe abortion, and counseling. Target 3.8 addresses universal health coverage, which covers both access to services and the costs of those services. The key is that people can access the health care they need without suffering financial hardship. Half of the world's population does not have access to the health care they need, and about 930 million people worldwide spend at least 10% of their income on health services. 100 million people each year fall into poverty due to health spending. Target 3.9 aims to reduce the number of deaths and illnesses from hazardous chemicals and air, water and soil pollution and contamination. The means of implementation cover tobacco control, access to vaccines and medicine, health financing and infrastructure, and pandemic preparedness. And that is SDG3, good health and well-being. And that's it. That's all I have for you today. As always, thank you so, so much for being here. Don't forget to check out the blog post if you want more information or to continue learning about this topic. If you learned something in this video, give it a like. It helps me and the channel out big time. And if you made it all the way to the end, wow, you are a true champion and deserve a sustainability badge of honor. That's it for now. See you in the next one. And until then, keep fighting the good fight. Bye.